What's up, Contians? Welcome to episode 77. On this episode, we're going to get into uh, a deep dive into Nanny Doss, the famous serial killer from the 1920s to the 1950s. Um, we are going to get into the Nuremberg Code and anti-vaxxers and why I think it's such a dumb argument to have against getting the vaccine for COVID. Um, and then, of course, we're going to finish off the podcast with two random facts. So enjoy. Welcome to the I Can't Even podcast. Nanny Doss. So let's get up in this bitch. Okay. So if you've never heard of Nanny Doss, she also goes by the Black Widow, the Giggling Granny, the Giggling Nanny, and was it the Long long Lost Lovers Killer? Let's see. I think that's what it is. Let's see. Lonely Hearts Killer and also Lady Bluebird. So Nanny Doss was a famous serial killer that was active between the 1920s and was caught and confessed in, I think, 1954, so the early 1950s. So for 30 years, this, is, this, this woman has been going around just basically killing anyone and everyone. Okay, Now, with most serial killers, we do know that... Um, generally their their propensity to murder comes from trauma right so like before the fbi could really profile a serial killer right they had to understand their psyche and one common like attribute in serial killers is that they have suffered trauma right and that's actually what nanny doss blames back when she was 7 years old she was riding on the train and the train comes to an abrupt stop and she smacks her head on the metal rail in front of her. And since then, she has had like severe headaches, severe depression, um, dizziness. And that's what she blamed when she confessed in 1954 for the murders. And I'll get to the murders in a minute because <laughs> like her names are going to make sense, except for the giggling nanny. Um, I had to do a little bit of research, the giggling nanny, the giggling granny. I had to do some research on why in the hell that was like her moniker. Because if you look up other like um, true crime podcasts, that's like what they like refer to her as well. Well, I think like Black Widow is way more fitting or the Lonely Hearts Killer way more fitting. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, Nanny Doss. Nanny Doss was born in Alabama um, in the early 1900s, and she grew up on a farm, right? Um, so according to basically any information that you can find on her, her father um, was like pretty strict on her, limited her and her uh, siblings' education, and made them basically be farm hands on the farm for the family farm, right? So she kind of resented her father in a way. Um, growing up, she also used to read the Lonely Hearts, um, uh, like column in the newspaper and would read like these romance and, and fantasyful novels, right. And always dreamed about her perfect husband, perfect life, everything that you could think of when it comes to like the perfect wife back in like the 1920s, right? Like, oh my goodness, I have an amazing husband, Great kids, home, friends, all that, right? I mean, not much different than what you think now, right? But it was like simpler back then, right? You didn't have fucking, you know, Instagram and OnlyFans and and uh, plenty of fish and Tinder, like kind of throwing in the mix there, right? It was just a very simple life. And that's all she wanted, right? She wanted to basically escape the farm and marry a great husband. So she did when she was 16 years old. Um, and I have notes here. Let me make sure I am pulling up my notes. 
Yeah, she married her first husband at 16. He was a co-worker at the linen factory she worked at in Anniston, Alabama. It's now called Anniston. I think it was called Blue Mountain back in the day. Oh, so she marries her first husband. Let me pull up his name because I forgot it. Charlie Braggs. So Charlie Bragg. So she marries him when he's 16. They'd only been together for four months. They only been dating for four months. The father gives his blessing and they marry. Well, throughout that marriage, Bragg's mother was like really fucking domineering. Like, I'm going to be a part of your life. Da, 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 da. I don't want your mother around. Da, 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 da. And it was just a, a, a very unhappy, unstable marriage. So, but during that time, they did produce daughters. So they had four daughters together. So from 1923 to 1927, they produced four daughters. So a fucking kid, one a year, basically, right? Which, like, I, she's 16, right? So she marries him in 1921. She has her first kid when she's 18 in 1923. And then from there, has a kid at 19, has a kid at 20, and has a kid at 21. That's that's bonkers, right? 23, 24, 25, 26, and then has another one at 20, 22. Sorry. Like, basically the first few years of your adulthood. And I guess at 16 back then, you're pretty much considered an adult. I mean, things were different now. Sorry, I thought my... My microphone was falling. If you're, if you're watching the video on YouTube, I like jerked up. I'm like, oh my God, my headphones or my microphone's falling. It wasn't. But um, obviously this caused some stress in the relationship. So she ends up uh, in 1927. And this is straight from like, I'm not like a sleuth, right? A lot of people have written on her. There's a bunch of blog entries, but I went to like the basics. What does Wikipedia say? And I'll branch off from them. And basically all the blogs and Wikipedia are pretty much like they all say the same thing. So I'm just pulling from here. But in 1927, the, cu- the couple lost their middle, their two middle girls to suspected food poisoning. So this is where it all begins, right? This it starts to get crazy. Soon after, Braggs took firstborn daughter Melvina and fled. So husband says, this bitch is crazy. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Shit seems sus leaving newborn Florine behind with Nanny. Bragg's mother died not much later, and Nanny took a job in a cotton mill to support Florine and herself. Bragg's brought Melvina back in the summer of 1928, so he's been gone for a year, accompanied by a divorcee with her own child. (laughs) Bragg's and Nanny soon divorced, with Nanny taking her two girls back to her mother's home. Bragg always maintained he left her because he was frightened of her. Right? So the first husband lives, okay? So this is where shit gets interesting. Her second husband was Robert Franklin Harrelson, and they met and married in 1929. So they met, and in the same year, they they wedded. They lived in Jacksonville with Melvina and Florine, and after a few months, she discovered that he was an alcoholic and had a criminal record for assault. Despite this, the marriage lasted 16 years. Melvina gave birth to Robert Lee Haynes in 1943. Another baby followed two years later, but died soon afterward. Exhausted from labor and groggy from ether, Melvina thought she saw her visiting mother stick a hat pin into the baby's head. So while she's trying to like regain some kind of like, like her like grasp around what's going on, right? She sees her mom killing her newborn baby. When she asked her husband and sister for clarification, they said Nanny had told them the baby was dead and they noticed that she was holding a pin. The doctors, however, couldn't give a positive explanation. Like, I don't, I don't understand that. Like, I know like baby's heads are like super soft and malleable when they're first born. Right. And for like, what, several months afterwards or maybe the first year, I really don't know. I don't have any kids. But I know when they're first born, it's really soft because it has to fit through the vaginal canal, right? But can you really kill a baby with a, like, like a pin? Can you? 
That's great. I'm looking like my wife's here. She's not. She's in the bedroom. But I was like looking for clarification. Like, do you know this is where like a producer would help like my own young Jamie, right? I miss Cabe. Cabe, I love you. I miss you, bud. <laughs> this would be a very fun conversation together. Um, but anyways, so she kills the newborn baby. Um, the grieving parents drifted apart and Melvina started dating a soldier. So her daughter finds a new man. Nanny disapproved of him, of course. And while Melvina was visiting her father after a particularly nasty fight with her mother, her son Robert died mysteriously under Nanny's care on July 7th, 1945. So if we're counting up, that's th four deaths. Four already, right? So from 1927 to 1945, there's four deaths. Right. So she's not like on like some crazy killing spree right now. Right. But it's about to start ramping up. The shit gets fucking crazy in her her older years. Uh, the death was diagnosed as asphyxia from unknown causes. And two months later, Nanny collected the five hundred dollar life insurance she had taken out on Robert. Five hundred dollars. So back in the 40s, five hundred dollars was like, you know not like a crazy amount of money, but I'm sure it was like several thousand, maybe tens of thousands of dollars, right? Maybe like seven or $10,000, something like that. Like comparatively speaking. So she made some money. Death of Harrelson. So this is her second husband. In 1945, Japan surrendered to the Allied powers at the end of World War II. Sorry, Allied powers. And Harrelson was among the most robust partiers. So remember, he's an alcoholic. After an evening of particularly heavy drinking, he raped Nanny. The next day, she discovered Harrison's corn whiskey jar buried in the ground as she tended her rose garden. The rape had been the last straw for her, so she took the jar and topped it off with rat poison. As a result, Harrison died that evening. So this bitch just like, was like, fuck you. You can keep drinking, keep being a dick. Okay, keep drinking. It'll kill you. I mean, it literally did. Nanny met her third husband, Arlie Lanning, through another Lonely Hearts column uh, while traveling in Lexington, North Carolina, and married him three days later. Moves fast. Like Harrison, Lanning was an alcoholic womanizer. However, in this marriage, it was Nanny who often disappeared, and for months on end. But she was when she was home, she played the doting housewife, and when he died of what was said to be heart failure, the townspeople supported her at his funeral. Uh, of what was said. Sorry, I said of what he said. <laughs> like As I heard it come out of my mouth, I'm like, how did he say it? He's dead. Oh, I'm reading wrong. <laughs> but wait, shit gets crazier. Shit gets crazier. Okay. So um, he has heart failure, quote unquote, and the townspeople don't know about her history. Right, they don't know about the sluice of deaths that that follow her. So that's five dead now. That's five dead. Soon after the couple's house, which had been left to Lanning's sister, burned down, just randomly, right? And I'm sure this wasn't too long after Harrelson's death. Then sir, insurance money went to Nanny, who quickly banked it. And after Lanning's mother died in her sleep, Nanny left North Carolina and ended up at her sister Dovey's house. So Lanning. Right. Um, hold on. Do, do, do. Yep. So Lanning dies and then the house burns down. Then mysteriously Lanning's mother dies. Right. So what are we at? Six now. She leaves North Carolina, ends up at her sister Dovey's home. Dovey was bedridden. Soon after Nanny's arrival, she died. So she kills her own sister. Right. I mean, suspectedly and none of these articles that like i dove into lean into that but it's kind of like it's like sh like look at the timing right she obviously killed these fucking people right it's just not a coincidence like when she's around you know people just happen to be sick no she's fucking murdering these people and they're her own family right it's not like strangers right these are family um, so we're now at seven, seven deaths looking for yet another husband, because of course we go back to Nanny's like, you know, 
paradise, her, 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 her dreams of having the perfect husband, the perfect marriage. Nanny joined a dating service called the Diamond Circle Club, which I don't know why, but sounds so familiar. Like when I first read this last week, I was like, Diamond Circle Club. Like there's no way that still exists, right? The Diamond, I'm looking it up right now. So if you're just like listening to me on the podcast, um, bear with me. The Diamond Circle Club. See, I should have looked it up last week when I read it. Um, each video contains individual rookie partnerships and teams who have achieved Diamond Circle Club at the Karat level. Oh, Realtor, Diamond Circle Awards, Diamond Circle Club. Um, these all look like uh, pff, Realtor shit now. So the dating service no longer exists if you were looking for it. So she joins that. And soon after joining the club uh, meets Richard L. Morton of Jamestown, North Carolina. They married in 1952 in Kansas. So they meet North Carolina and marry in Kansas. He didn't have a drinking problem, but he was adulterous. So dude liked to get around. Before she poisoned him, she poisoned her mother, Louisa, in January 1953 when she came to live with them. And Morton died three months later on May 19th, 1953. So now if we're keeping track, that's nine reported deaths surrounding her. Not like reported that she murdered them, but just surrounding Nanny Doss, right? Lady Bluebeard, the Black Widow. Nanny married Samuel Doss. So this is where she gets her name now of Tulsa, Oklahoma in, in June, 1953. So Morton dies in May 1953, and then a few months later, marries Sam. You keeping up? That's bonkers. That's bonkers. Like, she's just getting around. Now, we also got to do the math here, right? So, she was born in, let me look it up. I think it was like 19, 1905, Okay. 1905. So what? She's like 48 now in 1953. She's 48 years old and bitch is getting around, dude. She's getting around and just marrying, murdering and moving on and just like ransom repeat. That's bonkers. Like, damn. Doss was a Nazarene minister who had lost his family to a tornado in Madison County, Arkansas. Anytime I see Arkansas, like I, first of all, until I moved to Texas, I completely forgot that Arkansas was like its own state. I know that sounds so ridiculous and stupid, but when you're like living in Alaska for most of your life, you kind of forget about like the lower 48s. I saw a, a, a a meme on Facebook where it was like, what, what Alaskans think of the lower 48s? It was like (laughs) basically like LA. New York, you know, um, and I think that was it. And then Seattle, right? It's just like, those are, those are it. And that's not too far from the truth, at least from my perspective. It's like, you kind of forget that like other states exist because it's Alaska is so all encompassing, but Arkansas. And every time I see the word Arkansas written out, I want to say Arkansas. And I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. Anyways, Sam disapproved of the romance novels and stories that his wife adored, right? So this is very similar to her father. In September, Sam was admitted to the hospital with flu-like symptoms. Hmm. Weird. Weird, right? The hospital diagnosed a severe digestive tract infection. So, must have been something he was eating. He was treated and released on October 5th. Samuel died seven days later, so literally a week later. On October 12th, 1954. So they were married not even a full year, right? Um, Or, yeah, a a little over like maybe about, what, a year and a few months? Yeah, June to October. Yeah. Sorry, I'm terrible at like calendar math. Nanny killed him that evening in her rush to collect the two life insurance policies she had taken out on him. So she was already planning this shit. 
And I think that's how she was kind of like funding her life because you see that she's traveled a lot now, right? She was born in Alabama, right? She meets her first husband in Alabama. He survives, right? The first husband is the only one to survive. And I think it was like at that point where she's like, I'm going to start killing these motherfuckers, right? Oh, you're going to leave me? You're going to leave me? No, I'm going to kill you, right? So uh, Alabama, then Jacksonville, which I thought was in Florida, but it is in Florida, isn't it? I don't know. Where the fuck is Jacksonville? See, another thing, Jacksonville. I really don't know which one they're talking about. So not the NFL, Jacksonville. Where is Jacksonville? Again, I'm looking up something. It's in Florida. Yeah. See, I knew that. Okay. Why do I doubt myself? So let, let's do the math. We're at like nine killings so far, right? So Alabama is where she's born. That's where she meets her first husband. Then Jacksonville, Florida, right? So that's two states. Where's the other one? Do, 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 do. Hey, do, 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 do. Uh, Death of Harrison. Do, 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 do. Okay. North Carolina. Okay. So she basically stays in the South, right? Oklahoma. Arkansas. Five states. Five states, right? So this last one, this is where it gets interesting, right? So Nanny killed him that evening in her rush to collect the two life insurance policies she had taken out on him. So she couldn't wait. Like, you need to fucking die, right? Um, so I'm sure she was trying to use like rat poison or something. It just wasn't killing him or she wasn't using enough. The sudden death alerted his doctor who ordered an autopsy, which is good. It was like, no, he just had like a fucked up tum tum. We sent him home. That shouldn't have killed him. Right. I mean, it could have. Right. In rare occasions, of course, shit happens. We don't understand the body like we think doctors do. Right. Like it, There's still a lot of mystery around shit. But the autopsy revealed a huge amount of arsenic. Huh. Pretty sure you find that rat poisoning in his system. Nanny was then promptly arrested. Right. So from 1924, right? 1920, basically, yeah. Like, uh, let's see, they met and married. So she killed in like 1927, right? Of food poisoning, right? So she'd been using arsenic, right? She'd been using rat poisoning to to kill people. That's her that's her MO. Okay. And 1927 all the way to 1953. That's a long time. And to never get caught. Now, this is before the internet. This is before like, you know, things were like overly developed. So getting away with this shit, it was a lot easier back then, right? A lot easier. But to try and do it now, like, and and this isn't necessarily going to turn into a true crime podcast. Although I've never expressed really my obsession with serial killers. Um, and you guys seem to like true kind like stuff, right? Um, and this is really, I want to shout out um, Anthony and Chad uh, over at the Over Under podcast. Um, guys were like super successful. Um, I really am like, you know, I wish I knew you guys like super personally. I just know that we have a lot of mutual friends in Alaska and we probably grew up all around each other, right? But they started the Over Under podcast and it just ended. Um, not quite sure why. Hopefully I figured that out. But this was kind of an homage to them because they did true crime. And it was really entertaining and really interesting. So I'm like, you know, I haven't listened to all their podcasts because, you know, since starting, I don't even know when. I don't even think it was a year ago. Maybe it was. Right. Maybe a little over a year ago, but they're already at the like same amount of episodes that I'm on. Right. Because they post like three times a week, two to three times a week, which is great. Right. Um, I wish I had that time to do that, but this was an homage to them. Right. So, but what, let's, let's wrap this up. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, shout out to, to uh, Anthony and to Chad. Uh, you guys are great and entertaining. And I look forward to what you guys put together. In the future, either individuals or with other people or together. You guys are great. 
So she gets caught. Um, do, 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 do. Let me get back to where I was. Um, she's arrested. Doss confessed to killing four of her husbands, right? So she's married five times. She kills, um, you know, the first one survives. She kills the other four. Her mother, her sister, her grandson, and her mother-in-law. The state of Oklahoma centered its case only on Sam Doss, um, which is weird. But I guess that was like really the only killing in Oklahoma. And so that was the only one they could really try her on. I don't know. I don't know how that works, really. Nanny Doss was prosecuted by J. Uh, Howard Edmondson, who later became governor of Oklahoma, which is kind of cool. Uh, she pleaded guilty on May 17, 1955, and was sentenced to life imprisonment. The state did not pursue the death penalty due to her sex. That is sexist. We're all about equality here. If the bitch is going to kill, the bitch will die. Uh, that might have just stirred some shit. I don't We'll talk about the death penalty at some point. I like getting controversial or you'll probably find it on the Patreon page. Okay. Doss was never charged with the other deaths. So basically get scot free. I mean, you really can't get worse than like life imprisonment at that point. You know, I honestly, I think life imprisonment is harsher than the death penalty. Um, and I will talk about that in another podcast, right? I'm not, I don't want to dive into that because I have a lot of opinions on that, but um, I guess it, it really didn't matter if she was charged on the other ones, except for like justice for the, the surviving family surrounding all of them, which is part of her family in many ways. Right. Um, Doss later died from leukemia in the hospital ward of the Oklahoma state penitentiary in 1965. So really from 1953 to 1965, she was in custody. Right, because she was in custody from 1953 to 1955, and then was formally sentenced to life imprisonment from there on. So, you know, that's a, that's a long time. I mean, she had served and not that long, right? But she's already old at this point, right? She's in her what 60s now, in 1965, or almost there, right? Not old, right? But actually, back then, yeah, pretty old, right? The 60 now isn't that old, but, you know, she served formally 10 years of that sentence. So probably about a quarter, maybe not even a quarter, maybe about half of like what she actually could have served, right? Because her life was at the end, right? And that's, that is Nanny Doss, right? In a nutshell. And I posted a picture of her on my Instagram. So definitely go check it out at I Can't Even Podcast uh, on Instagram. Um, she looks crazy. Okay. Um, and now that you know, like who she is and like what the fuck she was doing and why she's known as like, you know, one of the fame, the famous women serial killers, because there's not a lot of them documented. There are women serial killers, right? But there's just not as many as, as males. Okay. And I have a whole book of serial killers. So when I say I've been obsessed with serial killers for, for this long, um, shout out to Katie Monas. I doubt she's going to hear this. I'm actually going to, when this episode comes out, I'm going to tag her in the promo for it. And I will direct message her on Instagram. Um, Katie and I were homies in high school. I hope she's doing well. Uh, I hope you're doing well, Katie, if you hear this. Um, but I remember when we went, um, to Barnes and Noble, and we both bought this big, thick ass book of serial killers, right? And we're both, I think, we're like 16, 17 years old. And when we come up to the front desk, like the person was like, uh, okay, like, are you doing homework? We're like, no, it's just interesting. And it really is. Um, I really, I should have had the book with me, but I'll, I'm gonna be recording more. So um, when I, record other segments i'll bring it up and i'll i'll show you guys the book um katie i still have it i don't know if you do um but i'm gonna be picking up like every once in a while more people like nanny doss that that catch my interest right um and do more research on maybe more obscure serial killers that not a lot of people talk about right and there's going to be overlap on other podcasts um I'm hoping that, like I like I said, never heard, um, 
never, I didn't hear all of over under podcast episodes. Cause I had like, there's just, there's just a lot. There was a lot. I wasn't keeping up from the beginning and now I got to catch up. So hopefully they didn't do like a deep dive in any DOS. If they did go check it out. I'm sure it is way more entertaining than mine. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, to wrap this up, I want to talk about her names, right? So in the beginning, I, I I gave you her like known aliases, not really aliases, because it's not like she like went by them, but what the media called her, right? So the giggling granny, the giggling nanny, lonely hearts killer, black widow, and lady bluebird. So I or bluebeard, sorry, I could not figure out why in the fuck she's called lady bluebeard. Now, the only thing I can I can think of is like someone's using a, a obviously a, a pirate analogy, right? Where she is like, you know, the old saying rape and pillage, right? It goes back to the Vikings. It also goes to the pirates. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say that she was necessarily raping her husbands, right? But she was. She was wedding, having sex, having offsprings, and then killing them and ma- getting money off of it. Not necessarily getting rich, but pillaging them and then moving on, right? So that's the only like connection I can make with that. I couldn't find any information on why she's called Lady Bluebeard. And if you find information on it, um, because I didn't do like that deep of a dive, share it with me. I would love, love to hear why they called her that. But that's the only reason why I could think of that. Black Widow. Black Widow is obvious if you know what Black Widows do. So Black Widow, the spider, not the superhero, the spider, uh, when the females are like, the, it's a matriarchy, the females dominate, right? And in most of the animal kingdom, that's the case, right? It's always a matriarchy. The women dominate. Um, and Black Widow spiders... What they do is they attract their mates, the males, right? And the males are generally smaller and they will mate. And as soon as she is inseminated, she will, she will not let go of the male, right? So anytime a male black widow mates with a female black widow, that's their, like, they're going to die. A black widow will eat them um, to provide sustenance for the babies, Um, so fun fact, if you didn't know that, so this makes sense. Although obviously she wasn't eating her husbands, her dead husbands. Um, but that would have been more interesting if she was like one of those serial killers that cannibalized her dead husbands after she murders them. That would be cool. Now, the fact that they were filled with arsenic, she would probably die too. So maybe that's why she didn't eat them. Lonely Hearts Killer. So this is a deep dive in all their names. Lonely Hearts Killer. Um, She would pull from the Lonely Hearts column. And that's how she met um, most of her husbands. All of her husbands, except for the first one. All of her husbands were met through those Lonely Hearts column that were in basically any newspaper in any town that you went to. Right. It was like the old like Craigslist ads back in the day where it's like, hey, like, you know, miscellaneous romance, misconnections, like da 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 da, right? I'm a single male looking for a single woman, da 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 da. You know, let's get it on. Let's go have some coffee. That's what those columns were about. Um, and she would hit them up, meet up with these men, and obviously, right? Some of them, right? I don't know how many others she met up with, but some of them she married and then murdered, right? So that that one makes complete sense the last two names the giggling granny and the giggling nanny obviously the giggling nanny right is based off of her name her name was nancy hazel right when she married to sam doss her name her last name was changed from hazel to doss but she went by nanny right a nickname for nancy um the giggling nanny uh she was depicted in the media as just like this really happy, full of life woman, right? Where she wasn't like, she didn't seem depressed. She didn't seem, you know, disturbed. She was just always happy. And like other acquaintances of hers later on would tell that like, yeah, we really didn't suspect anything from her because she just always seemed so exuberant and happy with life, right? 
which differs than what Nancy or Nanny would say, right? Das would, would claim that, no, I was extremely depressed since I was seven, da, 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 right? Um, and she could have been, right? If you know anybody that's suffering from depression, you know that uh, people can hide it very well, right? They can turn that off for a moment to pretend like everything's okay so that nobody gets sus, right? Or so that they can like try and have a normal life. And then when they're alone again, it's just like this deep, heavy weight that weighs on them. And that's probably what was going on with Nanny, right? Is that she didn't have an appropriate outlet for the depression and the behaviors that were going on, right? Or like to counteract the behaviors that were going on. So she just lashed out, right? This, I, I married this man. He wasn't my dream husband, did not provide me the dream life. I'm going to kill him and move on instead of divorcing, right? And you look at the context of back then, a woman really couldn't divorce her like husband, right? Um, I don't know what the laws are, like what the laws were back then, right? But it's not like now where it's like if, if April wanted to divorce me, she could just bring me papers, right? And of course, I have to consent to it, right? I, I haven't done anything to warrant like a forced divorce, but um, she could. As a woman, she has that right. And as a male, I have that right. But men have always had that right. So back then, like a, a woman really couldn't separate from her husband, you know. And in and, and some places where it was legal, if it was legal at all, right, it was also frowned upon. So even when divorces became like inclusive, where it's like, hey, like you're in an abusive relationship with a man, you can leave him. It was frowned upon deeply, especially in the South especially in the Bible Belt, right? The Bible Belt and anywhere further south from that, right? Oh, yeah, looks like uh, uh, Elizabeth is leaving her husband, right? She's going to be called a floozy. She's going to be called a sloot, right? She's going to be called like just a wretched woman. She's breaking up a family. They have kids. How selfish of her. How is she going to pay the bills? Da, 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 da. It was a different time, right? It was a different time. Women did start in the workforce, right? So it's not like they couldn't work um, because of World War II. Women were working. Um, when the men came back, the women stopped working, right? Not all of them, but a lot of the men came back from war and retook their, their jobs. So the women went back home, right? And, oh, excuse me. Um, so times were different. So I, I'm sure that instead of finding an appropriate outlet for her depression, her anxieties, whatever's going on, and then on top of that, just always feeling trapped, right? He promised me the world. He didn't give it to me. I'm going to murder him, and then I'm going to go find another one, right? Like, I kind of see your logic, right? If you don't really have an option and you feel like you're, your back's against the wall, what else are you going to do, right? Like, I guess back then, like, you really could just, like, she went to different states, obviously, for a good reason, right? She lived in five different states and had five different husbands. Not a coincidence, right? She was doing that on purpose where she, like, her past couldn't follow her, right? Oh, like, oh, you know that, Na that Nancy Doss? Yeah, she was married three times before, right? Back then, she'd probably be considered damaged goods, right? And I don't want to hear anybody get on here and say, oh, Lakota is a misogynist, da, 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 da. Fuck you. It was back then, right? I obviously don't believe that. If you want to divorce your, your significant other and you have reasons to and you think you'll be happier, do it, right? Like I fully support that, right? But back then, things were a little bit different. So she was smart with it. She would move around and like get it. <laughs> if you're watching the video, you just saw this fly. I have this nagging fucking fly that keeps flying everywhere and I can't catch him. Um, he just flew right across the, the camera and you could see this little black dot. Um, so check out the YouTube. If you guys aren't checking out the YouTube, check it out. Um, so, sorry, I can't, uh, maybe this is why you guys listen because I go on these like random fucking tangents, but um, the names, Giggling Nanny. So that's why she was called that. The Giggling Granny is because um, even in her old age, she was still like this happy-go-lucky. And if you look at when she's being arrested 
and she's got or like after her, I think her sentencing, she's smiling in her picture. She is fucking smiling. Let's see. Where is let me find it. So I think it might have been in this one. In this one article I was reading. Yeah. After confessing the murders of four four of her five husbands, Nanny Doss leaves the county attorney's office and heads to jail. In that picture, right? That's captioned for the picture. Nanny Doss is fucking smiling. That is menacing as fuck. <laughs> That is menacing as fuck. Like, she did not care at all. At all. That is crazy. I mean, maybe she cared, but, like, she put up a front, right? And that is, like, you know, that's how you know someone's a little disturbed, right? That's, like, Joker disturbed. Like, I am fucked up in the brain. Um, I just confessed to murdering my husband's and my, you know, other family members. And, and I'm happy. Right. Maybe it was, maybe it was deeper than that. Maybe it was like, you know, finally I could find some peace, but that's disturbing. Um, I will pop a link, uh, so you guys can see this, or maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll share this. Um, let me take a screenshot of it. I will share this photo because this is fucking nuts. So if you want to see this photo, check it out on Instagram. Um, it will be uh, probably live by the time because I'll use that as the promo. That's crazy. So anyways, that's uh, uh, Nanny Doss, a.k.a. Black Widow, Lonely Hearts Killer, Giggling Nanny, Giggling Granny. And for some reason, Lady Bluebeard. Um, if you guys like this, um, I, I'm going to be talking about some other things. And I'm doing something a little different. Um, but I want to wrap this segment up. Is uh, I'm recording throughout the week. right? Um, so today's Thursday. This episode is not coming out till Sunday. And I still haven't recorded intros or anything like that. Um, I want to start preparing better for you guys. Instead of just like, okay, I have some notes like some rudimentary notes, haven't done much research. And uh, now I'm just going to try and record all of that at once. Well, I don't have the time for that. Like, I, I, I really like, well, let me rephrase that. I don't necessarily like have the time to be like so prepared that in one go, in one hour, hour and a half, I can like just boom. Right. And it's just me. So it's not like I can bounce it off a of cave anymore. I can't bounce it off of anyone. Although I am having a special guest hopefully next week. Um, and uh, I have to clarify that and like hopefully like put that in stone. Um, but I will finally have a guest again on Icon to even um, because you guys really like that. And I miss it. I miss being able to talk to someone and kind of bounce ideas off of um, in conversation. But if you guys, like this, right? The true crime shit. I'm more than glad to do more deep dives, be even more prepared, just get better at like, you know, bring you some more like journalism, right? Um, that's entertaining and give you my commentary on it because I'm an opinionated person and I love serial killers and I always have opinions on serial killers. And if you guys want to hear more, let me know. Right. Let me know on Instagram. Let me know on YouTube. Let me know on, you know, my email, icontevenmedia at gmail.com is down at the bottom of every description box now. Right. It's not on the older ones, but it is now. So if you don't want to like share on social media and you just want to hit me up, I'll read it. Right. <laughs> There's not many people emailing me. Right. On that email. So I set it up for you guys. It's for you guys to reach out to me. Um, it, it, like personally. And then also, if you want to be a guest on the show, if you want to come on and talk about what your interests are, or what you're doing or serial killers or whatever the hell is going on in your life, let me know, right? DM me on Instagram, email me, hit me up on Facebook, whatever it is. I would love to have more guests on. So this wraps up Nanny Doss. <laughs> The Nuremberg Code. 
So for anti-vaxxers, especially right now, I think they've been using this argument for a while for basically any vaccinations, but for the COVID vaccinations, everyone are not, I guess not everyone, because not everyone's familiar with, you know, World War II and what happened afterward with the Nazis, which is where the Nuremberg Code came from. It, it spawned from the trials in Nuremberg. But um, I, I've been hearing this argument more and more lately. Like, oh, what they're doing to us, like mandating vaccinations and da 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 da. It's illegal. Like, no, not necessarily. And here's why. Okay. And actually, before I get into the why, what's interesting is I did like a, a promo post yesterday and the people that have liked it, like only a few people have liked it. Um, they think that I'm like pro anti-vaxxer and I'm not like I'm vaccinated. And even when this, when this whole COVID started, uh, you can hear it, like go back to my earlier podcast, like a year and a half ago, where I talk about, you know, the vaccines and COVID and stuff like that. And I didn't take it as serious because I just wasn't worried about me. But then as time went on, I was like, well, I'm more worried about like, you know, my ferrets, right? They're part of April and I's family. I'm worried about her parents, my parents, you know, um, the older coworkers that I have. Um, since I work in the trade, there's a lot of old timers that are still working. They're a few years away from retirement. I don't want to get them sick and be like, you know, the reason why they get, you know, hospitalized or even die. But anyways, anti-vaxxers, like, it's crazy, right? So if you're not familiar, the Nuremberg trials uh, were basically, they were held between like 1945 to 1949, and it was a series of 13 trials. Um, and mainly it was the trials of uh, Nazi party members that were doing just horrible shit to people. Like, this is like the people that were running the concentration camps that were rounding up Jews and everyone, right? Anyone who wasn't part of the the new Aryan race um, during the the Nazi, the height of the Nazi era. Um, and so these trials were like for war crimes, right? And crimes against humanity. And so was born the Nuremberg Code, right? And the code is, um, you know, basically like 10 points. Um, and the first one, um, I think the first one is what everyone pretty much quotes and I'll read it to you verbatim, right? It's a little lengthy, but I'll read it to you. The voluntary number one, the voluntary consent of the human subject is absolutely essential, right? So reading that right there, you're, we're talking about what you can medically do to someone, right? Not medically, but like it basically, right? It's a medical professional code, but um, it's like, I think it stems to basically anything that goes to medical experiments. So people are saying that the COVID vaccines are a like massive, massive, uh, experiment. And in some sense, I guess it can be interpreted as an experiment. Um, but not really. And I'll, I'll get to that here in a second. Once I read this, right. Um, so the, the code, code one, this means that a person involved should have legal capacity to give consent, should be so situated as to be able to exercise free power of choice without the intervention of any element of force, fraud, deceit, duress, overreaching, or other ulterior form of constraint or coercion, and should have sufficient knowledge and comprehension of the elements of the subject matter involved as to enable him to make an understanding and enlightened decision. Boom. So that's just like half the paragraph in code one. Okay, they are referring to specifically like actual medical trials. The vaccines have all gone through, you know, I'll, I'll buy it, accelerated trials where humans consented to be test subjects willingly. Okay, before they could be approved. And I think now, um, what, two or three of the big ones here in the United States are FDA approved, or maybe one is right now. I can't remember. You know, I'll look it up here in a second, or maybe not. I don't know. Um, but like, that's a big deal, right? Because the Food and Drug Administration, once they stamp their approval on it, 
what they're saying is that the the risks that are involved in this are very low and they're acceptable compared to the greater gain or the good that it would do for society as a whole, right? So um, anything that is FDA approved, it doesn't mean that it comes with zero risk. It just means that it comes with acceptable ones. It comes with acceptable loss. It comes with acceptable risk, period. Um, What the vaccine is now is not an experiment. Like you do, like, like, As far as vaccinations go, like, yeah, I think really like mandating vaccines, um, uh, it's kind of a gray area. Like, I I don't understand why people just like don't go and get it and why like the government thinks or like companies think they have to mandate it, right? Like, especially health professionals, like health professionals, there are anti-vaxxers in the health field. Like, what is wrong with you? (laughs) your peers are the ones that are coming up with these, these vaccines and, and, and testing them and, you know, making them better. Okay. No vaccine when it first come out is like a hundred percent effective. I mean, no vaccine is a hundred percent effective. That would be a cure, right? Where it just squashes it out, but it has already shown that people who are vaccinated um, generally if they do catch that, the uh, COVID right now, they're not hospitalized, right? Like their life is not in danger. They'll get like flu like symptoms for a couple days and then they're good. I'll take that. Right. So let me finish this off. Cause it's, it's like that right there is like, you're, you, you, that's not what they're talking. They're talking about actual medical experiments. This is not an experiment anymore, right? You, you don't need to necessarily consent. So if they, if the government does want to mandate it, I think legally they do have a right to do so, right? I mean, plain and simple. And if you don't want to get vaccinated, stay home, stay home and best of luck, I guess. Right. Um, This latter element requires that before the acceptance of an affirmative decision by the experimental subject, there should be made known to him the nature, duration, and purpose of the experiment, the method and means by which it is to be conducted, all inconveniences and hazards reasonably to be expected, and the effects upon his health or person which may possibly come from his participation in the experiment. The duty and responsibility for ascertaining the quality of the consent rests upon each individual who initiates, directs, or engages in the experiment. It is a personal duty and responsibility which may not be delegated to another with impunity. Why can I not say that word right now? Impunity. (laughs) I wanted to add more very, or, uh, um, Damn it. I can't even talk right now. I just came home from the gym. I was like, you know what? I, I've been reading up on this. Let me let me get this recorded for you. Um, impunity. So uh, again, this is like specifically referring to like, un, like untested, right? Like we kind of know what's going to do to you, do to you. We don't know really what it's going to do to people, right? We know what the vaccine is going to do to people. We know what the risks are. Um, we know like that it helps, right? Like it's doing more good than harm. When I got the vaccine, I got the Moderna one. I got both of them, right? The first shot, nothing, right? Not even soreness in my arm, like not shit. The second one laid me out. I'm going to, I'm not going to lie about that. It laid me out. I, um, I got it on a Monday uh, Tuesday morning, I woke up like I was hit by a, like a brick, like a train rather, like just sore shit. Um, not really coughing or sneezing, just like, just sore and lethargic. Right. Um, so I went to work and I told my boss like, Hey, I got vaccinated. This is my second shot. Um, I don't feel that hot today, but I'm not running a fever. Um, and I'm not coughing or sneezing. I just, I'm just sore. Right. And it was a miserable day by one o'clock. He sent me home. So I worked from what well, six o'clock to one o'clock. I was like, I, I can't do this anymore. And then, uh, Wednesday I didn't go into work at all. I texted him at five o'clock in the morning. I was like, 
I've been out for an hour. I still feel like shit. I'm not coming in. He's like, good. Okay. And he is an anti-vaxxer, right? Uh, So I didn't go in, but then Thursday rolls around and it was like a complete 180. It was like nothing. Like the past two days never happened. Like I feel, I, I felt amazing. I actually felt better than I did uh, Sunday, right? Before I even got the shot. So I, I don't know what that is, right? But my body was reacting to it. My body, like a lot of people had some side effects, right? But I would rather take that than like be hospitalized for weeks or months on end or die, which I don't think I would die. Like I, I'm in like pretty decent health, a lot better than I was doing like two years ago. Um, so that's just code number one. And a lot of anti-vaxxers right now are quoting that saying, no, this is still an experiment. They don't know what it's going to do. They don't know the longitude, no like harm. No, nobody, no, nobody knows what the longitudinal harm is when, even when it comes to like prescription meds, right? Like I, I, I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was five years old and I'd been put on heavy, I mean, heavy stimulants. I'd basically been on meth since the time I was five years old to the time I was, when did I stop them? 23, 24. So about five, four to five years ago is when I stopped taking ADHD pills, period. I stopped. Um, and there's no doubt in my mind that because of that and because of other like uh, behavior choices that I made, right, that affected my health. But I think even if I was just on those alone, right? My blood pressure is through the roof. Okay. Once I got off of them, I started gaining weight, right? Because they were inhibiting my appetite. Um, so like, you know, there's no longitudinal study, uh, uh, data right now on the effects of ADHD and ADD meds, right? I'm sure those are going to be coming out where it's like, yeah, we've had, you know, not test subjects, but you know, it was FDA approved. Um, we knew what the risk were, but they didn't really know what the risk were if people are doing it for two or three or four decades, right? Like that's some heavy shit. And that's just what it comes down to when it, when we're talking about these innovations, right? When Adderall and Ritalin first came out, they're like, Oh my God, there's finally a drug that can help these people. Right. And I'm not going to lie. It helped me a lot, but it also just like fucked me up. Right. And there was a little bit of abuse, especially when I was in college where like, I just wouldn't sleep because I had so much to do. I was working three jobs and I was a full-time student. So like I would be eating them like candy, which was bad. Right. But it was so that I could stay concentrated on lack of sleep. Right. So obviously that harmed my health, but that's with any of these, that's with any of this. But when it comes to vaccines, right, look at the influenza vaccine. Right. And I will always draw this comparison. COVID and the flu are very similar. Right. Um, when the when influenza spread throughout the world, right, like the Spanish flu and shit like that, that was wiping out millions of people. Um, and when the vaccinations started coming out, like that was helping people. And now, like, you know, like I, I started getting the flu vaccine again probably a couple years ago. Um, and I like even before then, like I didn't really like have a problem with the flu just because I'd been vaccinated so much and I was taking like decent care of myself, like decent. Right. But when I would get sick, which would happen like maybe once a year, maybe not even right. I would get sick, like really sick. And then I started taking the vaccine again. Now I can't even tell you when's the last time I got the flu. Like I have no idea. I have no idea the last time I was like that sick for like a week. Right. Um, that's how it's going to be with COVID, right? Every year they're going to come out with a booster shot every year. There's going to be a new strain or two or three, right? What we're learning from COVID is that it's just, it's rapidly mutating, right? Like all viruses do, but this one's doing it at a rapid rate, right? So yes, they're going to have to come up with like innovative shit. That's just how it is. That, that, that's that's how this all goes. It's not a perfect system, right? But wouldn't you rather do something that 
that could help you versus doing nothing that will harm you. Like the people that I hear that are anti-vaxxers, it's not like they're healthy people. Like, you know, my coworkers and they know who they are. The people that are like shitting on this, they are not healthy at all. They are the people that if they caught COVID, they would be fucked. Period. Right. So I, it, it, it's interesting. Not all anti-vaxxers are like that, though. There are some that are like, no, like just be healthy, eat healthy food, get your micronutrients in and like exercise and all that and you'll be good. And that's probably true. That will strengthen your, your immune system. But drinking beer every day or eating fucking unhealthy or being overweight or be a diabetic, like especially like a type two diabetic. Like, no, like you're like you have all the comorbidity factors that kill people who contract COVID. You probably are the one who should get vaccinated. So it's just it's just interesting. Um I don't even know if I necessarily need to read the rest of these codes, uh, but I will leave a link that will like take you to these um, because there's not like, that's the big one that everyone like quotes, right? I mean, number two backs my argument if this was an experiment, right? But it's, it's not right. Not in the traditional sense that they're talking about. The experiment number two, the experiment should be such as to yield fruitful results for the good of society, unprocurable by other me methods or means of study and not random and unnecessary in nature. Right. Like. Th this is for moral medical testing. Right. Which they had like during the covid vaccination trials before it was released to the public, they went through all of this. Right. Every test subject that that consented and was involved in improving the vaccinations before they were released to the public, they were all subject to the Nuremberg Code. Everyone is that goes through these these trials. So if you think you're like some like fucking smart ass who's like, man, like, you know what? Fuck the vaccine. You'll never mandate it. You can't. It's against global law. You like, you obviously don't know what they're talking about. And the only reason why they think this pertains is because in their minds, they're interpreting this whole vaccine as a mass experiment, which all vaccines are in a sense, but the Nuremberg code is not referring to that. It's referring to very specific, Hey, we are doing a medical trial that has not been tested before. These vaccines have been tested. We do know the effects. No, we don't know the long-term effects. We never do. We never do. And that is a little short-sighted, right? And you're kind of hedging your bet that like, by me doing this, I'm doing some good for myself and for others, right? And you're hoping that the scientists that were involved got everything right but that doesn't always happen right that doesn't always happen um so we'll see but in the end if you guys are using the nuremberg code right like there was one guy he was going to like um his local walgreens or walmart or something like that like their their clinic <laughs> He was like, I'm going them. I have the printed out Nuremberg code. I'm taking these fuckers to jail. And he's like, no, you're not. Like, you're just being an asshole. That's it. And like, trust me, like, I hate this. Like, uh, Washington, Oregon went back to a mask mandate. And I don't even know till when. I think it's still like January or something like that. Like, it sucks. It sucks working in the trades, wearing a mask when you're like framing or hanging drywall lifting heavy shit, walking up and down stairs with heavy shit. Like it's not fun. Right. But we have to do it. Right. Like it's just, they're trying to like get this shit under control before they have to shut everything down again. Right. And it doesn't mean if everyone's vaccinated, everyone's good. Like there's still risk. Right. Really what everyone should be doing is eat less food. Right. Eat better food. Exercise three to four times a week, 
right? Get your sun and get your vitamins. If they would just do that, right, our we wouldn't be in such a like fucked up situation, right? We wouldn't be in such a situation where it's like, oh my God, like we have to close everything down again, right? The economy is going to tank again. People are going to lose their lives. People are going to lose their well-being, right? Their houses, their security, everything, right? Um, so moral of the story, if you're using the Nuremberg code, if you're not exercising, eating right, like the perfect health specimen, you probably just should stop because it doesn't pertain to this and just live better. If you're not going to get vaccinated, do that at least, right? Like if you're not going to be vaccinated, do that. But at the same time too, if they do mandate it, right. And you're trying to use this as an argument, it's not going to work. It's, it, it's just not right. It's all, they've already gone through the protocols. Now it's FDA approved on one of them, if not all of them by now. So that's it. So if you liked the post that I posted yesterday, and if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I can't even podcast on Instagram. It's on the Facebook page as well. Um, you know, go ahead and like it. For those that liked it, that are anti-vaxxers, once you hear this, you're probably not going to like it so much. So that's what it is. All right, Contians, you know how we finish off these episodes. We're going to hit it with the two random facts. Two random facts. Right. Fact number one. In 1907, an ad campaign for Kellogg's cornflakes offered a free sample of cereal to any woman who would wink at her grocer. <laughs> that would happen in 1907. That could not happen now. Right. Because people would take that shit too seriously. Like, oh, like you're going to give us a free sample because we'll, we'll wink. That How misogynistic is that? Oh. But I'm sure women were taking advantage of that shit back then. Like, you're going to give us free cereal? Fuck yeah. Right? <laughs> like, what What? What could be like a... I don't know. Like, they do it like a, a modern thing, right? Like, you do a dance move and you get some, like, free, like, special K. Right? That's Kellogg as well. Right? That's that's a woman woman's, like, oriented health cereal. By the way, if you think that any cereal is good for you, um, you're wrong. Like, none of them are good for you, by the way. Right? There's even, like, new, like, protein ones, right? But, like, how do they make them taste good? Artificial sweeteners is what they use. So, hate to, like, bust your balls if you think you're eating cereal and being healthy. Like, really, there's – I haven't found one. Right? I haven't looked at all of them, Right? But there's like so many of them that like are marketed as health food and they're not. So you can stop fooling yourself on that. <laughs> All right. Fact number two. Um, goosebumps are actually caused by a muscle. It is called the erector pili muscle. I had no idea. That's actually really interesting. <laughs> That's really interesting. I had no idea that that's what that was called. Um, oh, that disappeared on me. I took a screenshot of it, though. I had no idea. Like, I know that, like, the skin is an organ, right? But, like, as far as, like, muscles, like, do you have to, like, to get, like, really, like, pronounced goosebumps? Can you, like, work them out by, like, constantly giving yourself goosebumps? Huh. I don't know. You know, I, I, um, I'm one of those guys that like, when I listen to like a really like, uh, really good song, you know, one that either just like, Oh, like just hits or you're like, damn. Right. Like this guy, sick ick music. You should check him out. Um, he's, he's on like TikTok, but I see all of his TikTok videos on Instagram. Um, cause I don't have a TikTok. I know I said, I don't know if I posted on the Patreon one or on, uh, on the one that I actually published last week, but I, I don't think I'm going to start TikTok. I don't know. I wouldn't even know how to use it. I'm not going to do the fad dances and stuff. And that's what everyone wants to see. 
and I'm not a smart guy, so it's not like you can learn anything from me. So probably not going to start one for the podcast, but I do see all this shit on Instagram. And man, there was a song yesterday I played and he just like does little snippets and he like builds them in front of you. And it's like, damn, that slapped. I got goosebumps yesterday. Like, but can I like constantly do that? Like, I feel like if you're, if you're constantly exposing yourself to like goosebumpy, uh, like, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Like goosebumpy causing things, right? Like excitable things that cause goosebumps. I feel like you would just build a tolerance and you're not going to get like pronounced goosebumps. But could you imagine like that's a fad 15 years from now? Like, like, oh man, like look at that guy's goosebumps. Like he must live like a gnarly life, right? Like do like, thrill seekers just have like really strong goosebumps that come out when they, because they just do like a lot of crazy shit. Did evil can evil just have like the most pronounced goosebumps? I don't know. I'm sure it's a fat. Oh, look at that bitch. Look at her smooth ass skin. A bitch doesn't live a life. <laughs> I can see it now. Like just like, cause fads are crazy. Like the trends that are happening now are just, they're just ridiculous. You know, speaking of fads and trends, this is how I'm going to end the podcast. <laughs> and you remember, you guys remember when the Tide Pods were like a, like a thing, like that was a problem because there was challenges on the internet to eat them or some shit. So like teenagers were like eating Tide Pods, right? Like, which is so sad. Um, they still like I went to Safeway. We go to Safeway every Friday for our groceries. And when you go up to the front, that's where they have their Tide Pods. They are locked behind a glass counter with their alcohol and cigarettes. <laughs> I never thought I would live in a society where your your laundry detergent is locked behind the cabinet where alcohol and cigarettes are locked behind. Like, do you have to be 18 now to buy Tide? Like, that's that's mind-blowing. So, anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm going to sign off of here. Please go check out. If you want to, like, actually stay up to date on everything, the easiest way to do that is go to icontevent.com. That's I K A N T E V E N dot com. All right. I post the YouTube link to it. I post like videos that aren't on YouTube. Um, you can get to my Patreon. You can get to my Instagram, the Facebook. Um, what else do I have on there? Oh, basically all the major platforms that Icontevent's on, like Breaker, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Like you, all you have to do is just click the button. That's it. And it'll take you to it. So, or you can listen to it on Spotify on the website or watch the YouTube video on the website. So either one, right? So be sure to check out icontevent.com. Um, you can get to the Instagram and everything there too, but make sure that you're following and you have it like favorited right? Like favorite icon to even, especially on Facebook. If it's not favorited, you're not going to ever see my posts. Like no one ever sees my posts on Facebook, right? Cause I don't, I don't pay for ads very often, but do that. Check out the Instagram and definitely go subscribe and click the little bell button in the corner so that every time that I post a new episode every week and it goes on YouTube, you get a little notification bar on your phone. And that way you can click on it and you can subscribe to it. Every time you like a video, be sure that you're liking it and sharing it with one other friend. Do that for all the podcasts on any platform. If you're listening, like it, rate it, subscribe to it, and share it to one other person. Hey, check out this episode. That that does me a favor by helping me grow, right? And if you like me and you want to be friends, that's what friends do. Anyways, I love you guys. Have a great week, and I will talk to y'all next week. Peace.